I never know how to start these things. I've, I've been told not to wave my hands, not to rock in the chair, don't peck my nose, all sorts of things. Now I've been told I have to say hello to you. So what do I do? I say hello, good evening and welcome, or what do I, hiya, or I don't know. I'll just say hello anyway and uh, we'll get started. This week was uh, relatively interesting in the council. Well, to me, who's a council nerd, Alderman McKay was in the chair. She's a very good chairman. I must admit she keeps things rolling along. She keeps people right on the ball. She doesn't let you sort of waffle to one side or the other. She does have her faults sometimes when she gets too passionate about a subject, she'll force a subject, but that's the role of a chair. Otherwise, she was quite good. It was a corporate meeting tonight, uh, or last night, I should say, and the first thing on the agenda was uh, tourism, econo economic development and tourism. Uh, my involvement then was to discuss about the town centre and the poor quality of the town centre at this moment in time. Uh, my problem with the town centre is that we, we as a council employ a town centre manager, Stephen Dunlop, and it, I believe we employ him so that we can keep our hands clean from the town centre. So we can say, the town centre is not doing well, speak to Stephen Dunlop, it's nothing to do with us, we're spending our £55,000 a year, whatever. But my problem with that is that last night, and I made the point quite clear, that you have to talk directly to the shopkeepers. Hours. Excuse me, that's my automatic timekeeper coming in there. You have to talk directly to the shopkeepers. You, you just can't talk to the town centre manager all the time. The Chamber of Commerce is a good conduit to talk to shopkeepers, but they don't represent all the shopkeepers. Uh, there's a lot of shopkeepers in High Street, for example, which don't belong to the Chamber of Commerce. They want to get their own little fun day going. They want to have a special High Street fun day uh, and maybe build up the trade in, in High Street, but they're not members of the Chamber of Commerce, so there's a problem there. And I made it quite clear that we as a councillor are supposed to be taking the lead on what's happening in this borough, and yet how can we take the lead if we're not even talking to the shopkeepers but we're speaking to a third party? And it's time that we got together, and I don't mean taking a lead financially, I don't mean throwing thousands of pounds at it, but maybe some joined up thinking about getting the shopkeepers together and all the sides, and getting the Chamber of Commerce together, getting the, the town centre managed together, and getting the council to sort of point them in a direction. Uh, God help us if it's the wrong direction, but at least she's trying to get somewhere going in one direction. Uh, that was received quite positively by the uh, uh, the lady who's in charge now of the corporate section, Christine Mahan, who is a very, very good officer, very, very dynamic and pushes things forward. So hopefully she will bring that further about. Uh, the other aspect of this was Queen's Parade came up and Mr. Pauly spoke on this and he gave an update roughly where we are now. He said that the Bangor Master Plan had to be passed before we could proceed with the Queen's Parade plans. He also put a cautionary note out to say there's not a lot of money about out there uh, for developments, etc., etc. Uh, and I raised my hand and asked a couple of questions. The questions I wanted to know, Mr. Pauly, were when we were doing the Queen's Parade project, we had the developer, ourselves, the DSD and the planners and the roads, and we had gone through the whole stage right through the sort of planning. And now we're being told that we have to wedge in this master plan in the middle of it. It's delaying things, pushing things outwards. Personally, I think it's a delaying tactic to stretch things out because I don't think there is money to develop this. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk about money on the Queen's Parade in a second. But uh, I said, why is it wedged in? And Mr. Pauly said it's because of the BMAP and because of legal reasons, heads of agreement and things like that there. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it has anything to do. I'm not saying Mr. Pauly's lying. It probably is what he's, he's been told by the DSD, et cetera, et cetera. But to me, it's a delaying tactic. Uh, I, I believe it's just been put in there. The, the master plan itself is just new flowers, new bushes and trees, stuff like that there. There's nothing drastic that they, they're suggesting for Bangor. They're not even changing the zoning of where, which is commercial and where is commercial and where is not commercial. So what it has to do with BMAP and what it has to do with legalities, I don't know. But I think that's just put in there as a ploy. Financially, uh, Mr. Pauly did say that there's not a lot of money out there. And then I did ask the question, I said, what happens if the worst happens, the very worst happens, and our developers are no longer able to do this? If they go down or anything like that there, are we protected? Is our investment protected? Uh, and will we still get the things that we've said? Now, Mr. Pauly said to me that uh, 
the DSD would then pursue the matter and go out to tender again for new contractors and stuff like that. But there's a big issue with that. The DSD don't own that land. The developers who now are there uh, own the land. We've sold it lock, stock and bound the developers. So the DSD just can't take it over like that. So I don't know what the legal technicalities are, but the DSD would have to do something legal to take over that land. Uh, and I don't know why you can do that because if you go bankrupt or if you go down or you do a go insolvent, like any, I'm not saying our developers are going insolvent, but if any goes so that land then belongs to the receiver who will sell the land to the highest bidder. Now, is the DSD going to do bid on that land? Buy it 10, 12, 13,000? We've already spent five million pounds on it. I don't know. So I'm a bit worried about that. And also, my understanding is that if, if the money's not there, say the developer did have a problem, our contract would be null and void then. So the theatre is out, and so is the t uh, anything to do with tourism, because we did have some stipulations in there to try and enhance tourism facilities. So if there are any financial problems, if there are any money worries, or if there's no money out there, Queen's Parade we could be in a real problem with. So I think a lot of the councillors are not happy with Queen's Parade. Uh, I'll talk about Queen's Parade in a special some other time. Right, and then we move on to, let me just refer to my minutes, because I'm waff waffling so much here. Uh, we moved on to the uh, some artefacts, artefacts that the council owns, silver plate and all sorts of things. Over the years, many years, we've been given a lot of artefacts, silver plate and stuff like that there, you know, trophies and stuff like that there. Some of it's gone missing over the years. And I suggested that maybe they want to look at some of our uh, halls, like the Borough Gymnasium, because I understand there's silverware there that might belong to the, the, the council. It had been a thorn in the side of the council a few years ago, and I got really seriously criticised for asking to look there. But I think it's time we had a look to see what was all part of the ratepayers, your, your stuff, after all. And then we went down to uh, nothing terribly good about grants or anything like that there. Uh, then we went into the concerts update. Now the concerts update, the BBC proms are coming, and also M and M's coming. And uh, on Facebook, you probably see there's a lot of people quite concerned about M and M, his language, his attitude, his well, he, he's just not a nice person. Uh, maybe he's a more mature person now that knows that he makes money by pretending to be not a nice person, but he still sings these lyrics, blah, blah, blah. Now, I made it quite a point, and I said that I am an old fogey, I know I'm an old fogey, and I made it clear that if this was being sung down on the seafront, probably get arrested, the kind of lyrics he sings. But I know 140 million people have bought his album, so I'm in the minority. But the thing that I'm concerned about is the kind of crowd that he brings with him. Now, 99% of the audience will be great. 99% of the audience were great with Snow Patrol. 99% of the audience more than likely will be great with Eminem. But he could bring 2 or 3% of that audience that are sort of angry and nasty and things like that with him. May not happen, may be fine, but that's a worry that I have, and I've asked for that to be policed well and truly. Also had a lot of people concerned around the park because they, they live there, and this is a afternoon concert, sorry, not afternoon concert, a midweek concert. And that's different from a weekend. People work during the week and things like that. So I've been given assurances, solid assurances of monitoring the the noise levels and things like that. And I've been given solid assurances that the security will be in place. But I did warn that if it goes wrong this time, that it might threaten the whole thing because I don't think any councillors would like it. Now, a lot of the councillors got up, especially the DUP, and were a bit concerned about the type of artists. I'm concerned about the type of artists because of the crowd he brings. I don't like his bad language, his swearing, and his anti-cop stance, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be the one who dictates who, who, whose morals are right in this place. We shouldn't be the moral arbiters. We shouldn't set moral standards. We find enough hard, hard enough job keeping our own morals in place from setting somebody else's morals. Now, I think that's about all the excitement that I'm going to talk to you about that, but I'm going to talk about racism in a second. Just let me look at that. Annual Arts Report. I thought it was the Annual Arts Report when I was chairman last year. I uh, was congratulated by the new current chairman who said he was going to come and ask me for some advice. 
but not a lot of advice. I think he had to get a little bit of a cheeky sort of thing in there. Why he had to do that, I don't know. Uh, and then the other issue that I forgot to mention to you is that when we were talking about economic development, I talked about the town centre. One of the other new councillors got up and agreed with me. Now, agreeing with me is not a problem because I don't, uh, you know, I fight with the councillors, but I like to think I bring a bit of common sense into the chamber. But he had to say in the first instance, and it bugged me a bit, he says, this is his first speech, maybe the second time he stood up in council, he says, I th never thought I'd say this, but I agree with Councillor Lennon. Now, the guy's bum's only cold in the seat still, and he's talking to me like I'm the worst in the world. Maybe it's sort of a joke gone bad, but somebody I'm going to keep an eye on in the future. Now, finally, racism, Brian Wilson. That, that really annoyed me. That really annoyed me that somebody like Brian Wilson... Oh, why should I say that? Why should I say somebody like Brian Wilson? I know what Brian Wilson's like. Brian Wilson took my words out of context completely, twisted and manipulated to suit himself. Nasty little man, sitting in his underwear, looking at the internet, probably looking for problems with it, to try and attack people. Uh, I'm much better about it this week because I spoke to a barrister and I've had a lot of people comment, commenting me, white, black and Asian, saying that they don't see the racism in it and the racism must be in the eyes of the beholder. So that made me feel a little bit better. And also a lot of the, my friends on Facebook and email me and stuff like that there. And that made me feel a bit better. The last thing I want to be done, or one I want to be seen as by, is, is a racist. Race, race asked. Mm, that might be right. The last thing I want to be seen is a racist. Now, the council still may play games with this. You know, it might come up before council and the council may decide to have a bash at me and uh, agree with it. But they'd be, risking their, they'd be risking something because I have taken legal advice on it. So, Brian Wilson, you beware because I'm coming after you if you push this any further. But even at that, Brian Wilson, I'm coming after you anyway. You're not going to be able to stand up with me without being criticised if you bumble your way through something. I'm going to be right behind you. I did it twice on you this week. I'll do it every night now from now on. You ain't getting away with it ain't from now on in the future. Right, so that's my warning to Mr. Wilson, but uh, I think I think that's it. Um, much better this week. Not so depressed this week as I was last week. Uh, and thank you all to my Facebook friends and things like that for, for uh, giving me the facts and keeping me straight. See you again. Thank you. Bye.